Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Elisabetta Savetskina and I'm a DPhil student at the University of Oxford. Today I'm presenting our MIUA 2021 paper with the title First Trimester Gaze Pattern Estimation Using Stochastic Augmentation Policy Search for Single Frame Saliency Prediction. Let me start with a brief introduction to the topic. First trimester screening happens from 11 to 14 weeks of pregnancy. Sonographers have around 20 minutes to do the scan, which limits the number of structures they go through. In the first trimester, only two biometric measurements, such as nuchal translucency, NT, crown rump length, CRL, are displayed as standardized imaging planes in FASP protocol. FASP is a fetal anomaly screening program where routine ultrasound scans are standardized. NT, on the left, measures the size of the clear tissue behind baby's neck. CRL, on the right, measures the length of fetus from head to buttocks. These two measurements are the only compulsory image components that should be analyzed and scored using a 12 components table. However, due to the advances in technology, spatial resolution and appearance of detailed ultrasound structures, there is a potential to measure more than just NT and CRL in the first trimester. Our contribution is twofold. We consider single frame saliency prediction from a first trimester multimodal ultrasound dataset, predicting the gaze for all structures and planes that come into sonographer view. The bulk of our architecture is focused on stochastic augmentation policy search. We demonstrate that it can be used for segmentation purposes and is able to accommodate the structural variations of the ultrasound anatomical views. Our approach consists of two steps. First, we need to acquire image and gaze data during a routine ultrasound examination. Second, train a model to predict sonographer gaze distribution, referred to as visual saliency map. Essentially, the model needs to predict the likelihood of the sonographer fixating at the specific point. Looking at step one, we attach an eye tracker to the monitor of the standard ultrasound machine and track the gaze of sonographer while the scan is performed. For the study, we use 115 first trimester scan videos with the corresponding real-time gaze tracking data. During a scan, sonographers search for a standard biometry plane, denoted as live B-mode on a diagram. Next, they freeze the image, take measurements, and save the best acquisition. In the proposed research, we estimate the gaze pattern three seconds before the sonographer freezes at the standard plane. Now for step two. Training a model to predict visual saliency maps. This is the overview of our architecture. The method is divided into blocks, starting from data generation, followed by data augmentation, policy searching and saliency prediction. We propose a unit network variant for single frame saliency prediction and employ random augmentation with mix-up as part of the data augmentation strategy. In order to focus on the main part of the architecture, which is the data augmentation, we will summarize the first and the third steps here. Input frames are pre-processed. The model is trained using unit variant with a softmax activation function, trained by Adam optimization. The loss function used is schoolbook Leibler divergence loss, KLD for short. We backpropagate the KLD between the target and the predicted saliency maps. Our second and most important step is data augmentation. Data augmentation in general is used to artificially increase the training data set size and variance. It helps with generalization and data set imbalance, which is a common issue in medical domains. Our data augmentation is comprised of the mixed example data augmentation and random augmentation, the details of which are discussed in the next slides. Mixed example data augmentation, mix up for short, smooths out network performance in linear interpolates of input feature vector. In order to employ mix up, we generate two sets of ultrasound input frames and ground truth saliency maps at random. Then we pair them into a data set. The training distribution is extended using element wise weighted averaging of two random examples, producing the final artificial mixed example image pairs, X and Y tilde. Lambda is part of beta distribution with both arguments representing interpolation intensity of artificial images for each pair of examples. And M is a learned hyperparameter varied from zero to 12. Let's move on to the next augmentation method, random augmentation. Random augmentation introduces a search space 
with the regularization strength that can be tailored based on model and data set size. This table shows how each transformation affects ultrasound input images and their corresponding ground truth saliency maps. We adopt a grid search with fixed magnitude schedule and available transformations, which are displayed as the colored boxes at the top. These include six affine, 10 histogram, and three nonlinear transformation examples. Each augmentation policy is defined by N, which is the number of transformations from K that an image undergoes, and M, which is the magnitude distortion of each transformation. A star denotes that the ground truth saliency maps change with the given transformation. These transformations are then applied to the mixed example images seen in the previous slide, with which we share the M hyperparameter. Now let's have a look at the results and first see what the output of the visual saliency predictor looks like. Here, we show two examples of the first trimester search for nuchal translucency, as well as the verification of Down syndrome around the nasal bone. Both videos are in the same time frame, which allows us to compare random augmentation method on the left against mixed random augmentation on the right. The actual sonographer gaze is overlaid as a green map, and the predicted saliency map is overlaid as a yellow map. Sonographer focuses on the palate, nasal bone, and checks for nuchal translucency. We can see a visible match of gaze and saliency prediction. On this specific video, mixed random augmentation localizes better on all three structures, including NT. Whilst random augmentation mainly focuses on the palate and the nasal bone, assigning lower saliency values to NT. Importantly, both models localize the three structures well, which is important for clinical measurement. Here, we show some qualitative results with five frames from an exemplary search sequence. The rows show the input frames, the ground truth salience annotations, saliency predictions of our encoder decoder network with array against mixed array and baseline models, respectively. We refer to NT as a secondary prediction because it's less salient, therefore less visible. The relevant anatomical structures include palate, nasal bone, limbs, and nuchal translucency, which are marked in the top right frame. The ground truth is circled in yellow, array secondary predictions in red, and mixed array in blue, indicating that prediction of the baseline augmentation method overestimates the gaze of the sonographer looking at the nuchal translucency, while sonographer's actual gaze is mostly focused on the palate. Both models, array and mixed array, show better predictions of gaze locations for sonographers. Let us look at the quantitative results. The tables below provide the average test scores for the array, mixed array, and the baseline with two augmentations, which include random rotation and horizontal flipping. The performance of two networks was optimized using a grid search to find the best NM values. Random horizontal and vertical flipping were used in all policies as a baseline augmentation. Both augmentation strategies are to perform the baseline on all metrics. Random augmentation with values NM7 and 9 performed best on KLD and correlation coefficient metrics. Similarly, when using NM values 3 and 9, it's called best on similarity metric. When using mixed random augmentation, NM values 3 and 7 worked best on normalized scan path saliency metric. To summarize, the proposed stochastic augmentation policy search outperforms the baseline on all saliency metrics. Quantitatively, array performs better without adding mix up. With high augmentation values, the image becomes too distorted if used with mixed example augmentation. As KLD is the only metric that measures the difference between two probability distributions, array with NM values seven and nine is the best combination for our purposes. Naturally, there are limitations to this method. The model can receive two very similar frames with different gaze point locations on each. And without temporal information, it's not able to differentiate between the fast moving and slow moving segments. In conclusion, we demonstrated that a simple grid search can improve saliency prediction and help localize the structures important for clinical measurement. Automation of clinical measurement will be a subject of our future work. Thank you very much for your attention and please feel free to contact me with any questions via virtual conference tool or via email.